welcome to Developmental Psychology Unit 8. This is our final unit of the semester, and we're going to be talking about gender and sexuality development. And so we're going to start off trying to define what we even mean by gender, because it is actually a very complicated construct and idea. So we're going to start off by describing the difference between what we know as sex and gender. So we talked about sexual development a bit way back in Unit 2 on genetics and prenatal development. And in that unit, we talked a lot about the biological and physical development of one's sex. That is the sex of the fetus or embryo to become male, female, or intersex. And so by biological sex, we're really talking about physical anatomy or chromosomes or genetics or hormones. We're really talking about the biological components. In comparison, when we talk about gender, we're talking more about one's social role. If they perceive themselves as a boy or a girl or a woman or a man and the roles they fulfill. What we know is over the course of human history, sometimes there's been cases where in order to reach power, it's not so much about your biological sex, but more about your gender social role. For instance, we know that there have been popes and pharaohs of Egypt that have had a biological female body, but their social role is that of a man. And so this is the idea that a female pharaoh of Egypt perhaps wore a beard and wore the headpiece associated with the male pharaoh of Egypt, and that a female pope just began to present themselves as a masculine pope. And so the difference between biological sex and gender really has to deal with more with how, what roles you perceive yourself with in the world. So if gender is all about your social roles, well, that's just kind of what's your mind then, not your body. Okay, so it's your mind. In your mind, are you a boy? Or are you a girl? Are you a man? Or are you a woman? That should make enough sense, right? Well, that's where it gets even more complicated. When we talk about measuring gender, we have to acknowledge that over the history of how we discuss gender, this has changed so rapidly from a binary to one spectrum to two spectrums. Today, we talk about many spectrums of gender and gender identity. So we'll start off with what we mean by the binary. And so this is really if or. And so this is the idea by binary, there was only two choices. And so this is the idea that by gender, we're talking about boys or girls, women or men with no in-between and no middle ground. This is really, for a lot of Canadian history, we've talked about these two groups, that there's two genders, and we've seen them as sort of accompanying two of the main possible sexes, male and female. The idea that you may have a male embryo or a female embryo, and they develop into boys or girls, respectively. And so this is the idea that if you're a boy, well, this is the stuff you're gonna like. You're gonna like cowboys and soccer and swords and dinosaurs and trucks. And if you're a girl, you're gonna like dresses and makeup and jewelry and unicorns and bows. And those were the two options. We can see here, there's a lot of gender role restriction going on where we're saying, if you're a girl, you must fit into this box. And if you're a boy, you must fit into this box. And there was really much this boxing in effect where we said this, you belong here, you belong there. And that's the way these social roles went. We divided things. There was division of labor, a division of interest, and we decided what went where. Interesting enough, these are all socially constructed. So although you can see I have on the boy's side more of a blue box and on the girl's side more of a pink box, these are not something that's static over all time in history. We even know that as late as the 1950s, pink was considered a masculine color and blue was considered a feminine color, but it swapped somewhere in the 1960s and it stayed the same sense. And so these things can change. They're arbitrary and they're culturally defined. And even the little icons I picked for each are completely culturally uh, arbitrary and they're only specific to right now in one specific culture. That being said, we started to realize that perhaps starting around the 1970s, yes, we have boys, yes, we have girls, but in terms of one's psychology and sort of their interest, gender could be explained on a continuum. And so one of the possible continuums we viewed gender on was this one spectrum or one dimension. Now, the icons I have on this page are, again, just very culturally specific. They're not innate in any possible way. But if we were to look at this one possible dimension, one of the ways we could think about this dimension is we think there's some things that boys tend to do more often than girls, or men tend to do more often than women. And one possible example in one cultural idea could be the military. Although there's women in the military, you could argue that there's more men in the military. So that tends to be more masculine. 
And although men could certainly wear makeup, especially if they're in an entertainment industry or what have, women tend to wear makeup more often than men. So we could say that wearing makeup is considered more feminine. We might say that more girls play soccer than are in the military. So although soccer may be considered more masculine, it's slightly less masculine than in the military. And although working with tools might still be considered masculine, there might be more girls that use tools and can be handy around the house than play soccer, so it may be even less masculine. And we could see this on the other end of the spectrum. We could say, although uh, some men wear makeup, even more men might like gymnastics, and even more men like might, might like baking. So we could see these as a range of magnitudes in terms of how common they are in different genders. So everything on this side is most common in men and everything on this side is most common in women with listening to music as being something that's, you know, maybe perhaps seen as equal amongst men and women or boys and girls. So we could do a survey. We could ask and send this around to hundreds of people and ask, do you like to bake? Do you like to work with tools? Are you in the military? Do you wear makeup? And we could actually test and see which things are most common in women, which things are most common in men, which things tend to be very similar amongst both. And we could find examples to put on the spectrum that are empirically supported. However, they would change rapidly. They would change rapidly over the years, over the decades, in between subcultures and in between cultures. And so what I have here are just some examples. And so according to this one dimensional approach, we could have women that are very feminine, we could have men that are very masculine, but we might also have some people that their interests are on the opposite end of the spectrum. We might have some women that are very masculine, that enjoy sports and military action and don't wear makeup or do gymnastics. We could have some men that are very feminine, maybe enjoy baking and wearing makeup, but don't really enjoy sports. And we can have lots of individuals that like lots of things in the middle. For yourself, you might find yourself at one end, at both ends, or just completely in the middle. I'm actually terrible at six of these things uh, because the one in the middle doesn't require skill. I'll say I enjoy listening to music. So according to these examples, I would be completely androgynous and in the middle. And so this is the idea that uh, regardless of whether you're a woman or a man, you might find yourself anywhere on this spectrum. And so this one dimension approach helped us to open up the conversation and explain that you don't have to completely box in. However, we started using this one dimensional approach in the 1970s and it wasn't perfect. What often happened here then is we started to identify what things were more masculine and feminine and using that to socialize and encourage girls to be girls and boys to be boys or encourage one way or another. And so it could still be a way of restricting one's gender expression and gender performance. And another big criticism of this is really what's in the middle? Is this a lack of femininity and masculinity? Is this both? Is it something different? And so because of that, we went to a more two dimension approach. And a two dimension approach allowed us to have two spectrums, a spectrum of masculinity and a spectrum of femininity. So on this top line here, it goes from white to a dark blue, and we can see people on the right, uh, they may be high in masculinity. They may be the people that like military stuff and they might like sports and working with tools, but then you might have people that are still masculine, but maybe less masculine than the jocks. Again, this is culturally derived, but perhaps at this point in time in our culture, we consider gamer geeks as less masculine than our jocks. So that would still be a very masculine thing, but maybe not as much so. So you get to find your placement on this masculine spectrum. Where are you? And maybe you don't really identify with all those, but you like puppy dogs. And we tend to associate dogs with masculinity for some reason in our culture. So I put the puppy dog there. And so maybe you're not very masculine. Maybe you're moderately masculine. Maybe you're very masculine. And then you can find where you are on the feminine scale. Maybe you are really into makeup and ballet, or maybe you're really not. Maybe you're like crafts, or for some reason we associate cats with femininity. So maybe you don't identify with any of this, but maybe you like cats. Maybe you don't like anything on these spectrums except for the dog and the cat, and you'd be considered low in masculinity and low in femininity. Maybe you could be high in masculinity and high in femininity at the same time. Maybe you could be high in masculinity and low in femininity, or moderate in both, or any possible of infinite combinations. For myself, when I look at this, there's two things I identify right away. I like games and I like crafts, so I would probably be moderately low in both. And so what's important is these two spectrums are independent of one another. Using this two-dimensional approach allowed us to see different combinations of people and could articulate it in a bit of a different way. We could talk about people that were high in masculinity but low in femininity as being masculine. They might like our sports or our rough and tumble play or the masculine stereotype things. 
a person who's high in femininity but low in masculinity, well, they might like fashion and are stereotypical feminine things. You could, of course, have a person who's high in both, who likes fashion and sports, and they could be considered what we call androgynous. Andro taken from masculine, giant taken from feminine. Androgynous is a combination of masculine and feminine traits, and that you could have a person who's high in both. At the same time, you might have a person who doesn't really feel good in sports and doesn't really feel good in fashion, and they would be considered what was known as undifferentiated. And undifferentiated was a person who's kind of low in masculinity and low in femininity. Honestly, I put myself in that little blank box. I am not good at wearing heels nor at throwing footballs. And so that's where I would fit. And so the two dimension approach allowed us to talk about things in a much more easeful way. We could understand where we were a lot better. So as we started talking about how men and women could be high or low in masculinity or femininity, men and women can be androgynous, men and women can both be feminine or masculine, we started to say, hmm, there's, there's a lot on the go here. And today we talk about many possible spectrums, including the difference between one's gender identity and one's gender expression. So one's gender expression is how they express themselves, how they wear clothes, what are their hobbies, what is their personality like? Are they girly? Are they manly and macho? What is their expression? And that's something we can really see on the surface when you get to know someone, you, you know where they're at. In comparison, our identity is the label we put on ourselves. It could be associated and it's most likely to be associated with our pronouns. It could also be what washroom you feel more comfortable using. When you fill out a form and it asks about your gender, what do you feel like putting down? And so your identity and your expression can match, but they don't have to match. And so there's lots of different spectrums now. When we think about biological sex or sex assigned at birth, we understand there's three possibilities. There is female, male, and intersex. When we talk about your gender identity, you may identify as a woman, you may identify as a man, or you may identify as non-binary. We'll talk more about that in just a moment. And in terms of your gender expression, that's your attitudes and interests and skills, you may be more feminine, you may be more masculine, or you may be androgynous. And you can almost think about these yellow arrows as spectrums. They're sliding scales. You could be anywhere on any of them. You could be pretty low in femininity, pretty high in masculinity, but also somewhere there in androgynous. And we could put that as its own spectrum now. We could think about you as somewhat non-binary, but also somewhat as a woman. It is possible to be a non-binary woman or a non-binary man. And in terms of your body, when you look at your body, you might actually find there's some parts that look very female-ish or some parts that look very male-ish, or maybe you're somewhat female, but somewhat intersex. We talked about this way back in year two about Turner syndrome and Kleinfelter syndrome, how when those individuals look at their body and reflect on their biological nature, they may view themselves as a, a little bit of everything or a little bit of multiple things.